when you go into a store, when you go into the library, a big intimidating factor is when you look at the book and it's just this chonker. If it's two green angel oh, towers. Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> look at this, this. thing. <laughs> You look at this on I, the shelf, and you go, "Oh, I, I, I can't." I I'm look not at this, this. I look at this. I go, "Let's go ten reps for three <laughs> sets, and then call it a day." This is not a book. This is a dumbbell. Yeah, this, no, it's it honestly is hefty. <laughs> it's thing, a hefty. Look book. at this thing. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Tudor Realm Podcast. My name is Richard. My name is Austin. And why are books getting so goddamn long? <sighs> said it, we said we're chests there. <laughs> and not just that quote's not coming from us, it's coming from your mother. Now, to be fair, my mother didn't say goddamn. She is <gasps> a very good nature good nature woman i'm not saying god fearing god fearing is the wrong word so... she doesn't like profanity i inserted the goddamn but she did wonder why the hell are things getting so you're goddamn making long. your mother look bad in public of course you're saying that your mother <laughs> curses like a sailor and that's the title of this entire video yep wow sorry mom <laughs> it works as a better thumbnail <laughs> the, this was the video idea your mom just said hey why are books getting so long i can't read all these fantasy books you guys are reviewing we sat there and went are they getting longer yeah, uh, no, we're gonna look. We're, we are gonna look into it this episode. Our books getting longer. Why are they? If they are, and short versus long books, and all that fun stuff. You know? Also, I think we have a little game at the very end, oh, just kind of yeah. like guessing uh, us trying to guess what book series is like longer and how many pages it yeah, actually yeah. is. That'll be fun. That'll yeah. be fun. So, Rich, first things first. Are books getting longer? What What was your initial before even looking into the numbers? Did you think they were getting longer? My gut was saying yes, just because I've, you know, looked at uh, Isaac Asimov, uh, you know, sci-fi books, and then you look at just Red Rising, and I'm going, eh, yeah, things are getting longer, <laughs> generally. Oh, Isaac Asimov versus Red Rising being longer? Uh, or- honestly, any sci-fi book oh, yeah. I've read is longer than Isaac Asimov's foundation. We're biased with our Stormlights and our Game of Thrones and our Wheel of Time. So a lot of the books we like and read on here are pretty long. So we're, we're the bad sample size. If you ask us, our book is getting longer. Like, oh, yeah, a lot of them are mm-hmm. really long books. So you thought the same. I did. But I actually did look into this, and there are studies that have looked through um, a wide range of books. What'd and. You find? So there was a survey that looked at over 2,000 books here and found that it was – there was a – from 1999 yeah. to uh, 2014, the page uh, – the average page count grew from 320 to 407. So that's an eight, 83 page difference. Rich, you know why you're the yin to my yang? Hmm. That study was from 99 to 2014. Yeah. I have the one that goes from 2014 to 2023. Well, there you go. And what th- does that one say? It also says books are getting longer, but here's a caveat. Longer from then. Yeah. And here's the caveat, though. So there's a couple different numbers you'll see out there. If you look this up online, mm-hmm. you'll find there's a study that says the New York Times bestsellers have gotten a little bit shorter. You'll find ah. that. There's a reason for it. But then you'll also find other studies that are saying Books in general have gotten longer. Now, what this study did, why this one I think is the most credible, is they took a sample of over 25,000 books, 22,500 from fiction, 2,500 from nonfiction, and this was from the Goodreads list of books that were released each year from 2014 to 2023. So they just indiscriminately went and took a bunch of books, calculated the median length in pages from 14 to 23, which is where your study leaves off. What they found is why that bestseller thing came off as a little bit lower or maybe a little bit the same was nonfiction books. More of your history ones have gotten the same or shorter, whereas other genres have significantly increased in page length in recent history. That makes sense because on the New York Times bestseller, a lot of the nonfiction books get selected there. Yes. It, those are the majority, I believe, right? Uh, well, at least in the nonfiction section and your biographies and your history. So there's a lot of different categories you can be a New York Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. Fewer of them are fantasy or sci-fi. But, but can you guess which genre increased the biggest in page length since that 2014 time? I feel like it's a red herring to say fantasy, but I haven't read the study. So what is it? Horror. Horror really? has gotten, on average, 62 pages longer, but fantasy is also up there. It's gotten 48 pages longer. Your young yeah. adult, your erotica. 
got much longer. People people like more erotic nowadays. They need more smut. Yeah. They yeah. need they need longer longer smut sessions. Did you say that word? Why just emphasize? Mm. Never mind. Longer? <laughs> yeah. Girthier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the but the least page count, the most diminishing page count since 2014 was your histories. History books have gotten shorter and biographies wow. have gotten shorter. So people want more and more fantasy and people don't like their uh their history anymore people oh. aren't reading their histories if any of you are writing a college thesis this is your topic okay Th your topic is how page counts of hi actual real historical events have gotten lower and people want to go into the world of make-believe people wow. are getting stupider uh, that's what some people would say but not you and eh, maybe I uh, okay. would too. <laughs> no, I, hey, I'm I'm in this. I'm in that category with you all. I love me my fantasy and sci-fi books. Give me more of it. I don't want stupid history. Ugh, gross, terrible. It is. I actually do like it, but but no, I like for the, my, for the sake of for the sake yeah. of this bit. Yeah. Ew, gross. History, terrible. Yeah, the, fantasy and sci-fi are our main books we cover here. So yeah. to us, it's yeah, our bread. And our butter. bias of this being our sample size has been proven true. By mm -hmm. what the stats are saying. Quick break from the podcast episode to tell you who we are sponsored by, and it's an important one. Display. We love Display. We will never sponsor a company that we don't actually enjoy their products of. Amazon, don't come for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that ship has passed. <laughs> but Display, we're here for you. Yeah. They have they have an offer for all of you out there. 22% off for one to two displays and 33% off for three displays. And what are these things? Well, we're gonna show you. This is Displate. This is an upgrade from your shabby college, terrible movie poster. Get a nice premium metal one. This way you can actually show off your favorite poster and favorite art. A big problem with posters is the, often the corners peeling up. You have to put it in a, a fancy frame. These things go onto the wall super easy. You just put a magnet on the back. Instead of having to take things off the wall and store them, these attach with magnets to the wall and you just swap them whenever you want. And we have cool ones in my room at your office. One's behind the studio here of, of the Way of Kings. <laughs> you can get the book cover of the Way Kings on a display and hang it anywhere you want near your bookshelf. Get a display. They look great. Spice up your room. Look at these designs. They're, they're endless. They have Warhammer designs. Freaking Sauron. Lord of the Rings stuff. That is Sauron. Okay, I, was, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that wasn't uh, the one before, but yes, it is Sauron. <laughs> Go check out Display, link in the description below, or use the code 2 to ramble at discount to get 22 to 33% off. And you're supporting the channel. Thank you. And back to the episode. But something in my mind, I want to I see what you think about this, because you thought initially that books were getting longer. Mm -hmm. you, you agreed with the general sentiment there. I was thinking two things in my head that were going, man, maybe it doesn't make logical sense books are getting longer. And two things kept me back from doing that. One, that generally speaking today, people are reading less than they were 10, 20 years ago. And that's based on like this Gallup poll that people today are reading 12 to 13 books as opposed to 14 to 19 in the past. Mm -hmm. So my thought was just, okay. So intuitively, and this is just what I was scatterbrainingly thinking, that if people are reading less, why would books be getting longer? Huh, how does that work? And then the second part of that was, I don't agree with this study. Or this, I shouldn't even call it a study, but this rep repeated thing you see in the zeitgeist of that humans have a shorter attention span than a goldfish, that whole thing. But generally speaking, people will say, hey, people can hold their attentions much less today. So the two counterintuitive things that were going in my mind was one, if people are reading less, and two, people are said to have a shorter attention span, why would that lead to longer books? And I want to ask you, like, what, what have you considered that at all? What do you think about those two premises? Um, okay, let's, let's tackle each one. One by one. So first off, you're talking about... That's not the uh, Richard I know. You like to just throw. <laughs> you're being really organized, and I don't get it. Yeah, I know. But first topic of people are reading less books. Yeah. So one, you could think about it a couple different ways. I don't know how the study actually goes into this, but... It's just the, a poll that says, hey, are you reading... That's all it is. Yeah. Generally, people reading less on an average scale. So your average amount of people are reading less. Mm-hmm you're left with your far more intense readers. So if the general public is reading less, but your intense fans are still there and reading, you're catering toward a niche. And maybe that niche wants more to read. That's yeah, a possibility. Be, yeah, that could be a guess. The, um, the second, so pair that with this. Um, mm -hmm. I think complexity of writing tends to lean toward a 
a shorter book often where if you want to simplify your writing process often it will be a little longer because you use more words to explain the exact same thing it's a little easier to read so maybe books getting longer means a lean toward less complex prose so there's a possibilities the second one of people's attention spans i i certainly think it's true in some cases uh you look at things like TikTok and all, all the different uh quick access like yeah uh, obviously human attention span isn't the, the length of a goldfish it's not that bad but our ability to focus on something that's not uh immediately grabbing is shrunk uh, our, our ability to delay our gratification for a medium is much less than before so and how would that line up with the longer books gen i mean again it's the it's general catering to the niche right you're catering and to a niche the way, I, I would the way i like to think yeah. about that for marketers too or for anything the whole tension span mm -hmm. discussion i think it's basically true today that there's a higher competition for people's attention. So maybe people have less of a tolerance for committing their time to something that they're not sure they're gonna get good payoff with. Now that's giving a more benefit of the doubt to, hey, TikTok scroll and all this. Yes, obviously that's all there. But instead of reading a book, I could you know, watch. You now have so many other entertainment options that you didn't have 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that means compared to attention span. The way I like to word it though is just there's a greater competition for your attention i don't think that the human brain has switched in a way that goes i can't because i think you can focus if you stay more if you train yourself a bit and oh, things yeah. like tiktok have made that worse so our biology hasn't changed it's just that technology and shifted around us yeah technology is taking advantage of systems in our brain that we have not evolved to handle mm -hmm. that that's ultimately it that, that is it so when you're talking about things like TikTok, the reason why it can be really bad is you think... <laughs> so many people probably found us from TikTok. I know. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, hey, use in moderation. If this, if what I'm describing is you, please get off TikTok. There are other things to do in the day. Hey, but for example, a lot 90% of people, do, people listening to scrolling. this aren't... Like, they're doing something else. As you yeah, should have exactly. been listening to a podcast, but... Yeah, but I'm talking about the concept of doom scrolling where you're on TikTok. Yeah, tic a TikTok, a singular TikTok is what, 20 seconds to maybe a minute long. But that's not how people consume it. And it, at the far extreme end, people are doom scrolling. Where they're there for three, four hours, constantly Your scrolling. attention is hooked for three, You're, four hours, but constant but new stimuli constant being new thrown so at you. It, what is that? Is yeah. that your attention span being like sparked over and over again? Or is that a long attention span? I consider it very like taking advantage of your short attention span. Short gratification. So yeah. with a longer book, maybe this is the case that, yes, books are getting longer, but the content inside is more tailored toward your quicker gratification. So there's more moments inside a story that will grab your attention rather than a very long book that doesn't doesn't like it, it doesn't have a big uh, attention grabbing moment till closer to the end. Well, that let's start with that then. Why do you think books are getting longer with all this being said? What is causing books today to be longer than they were 10, 20 years ago? Um, Maybe even longer. So combining this with what the general zeitgeist believes on the internet, and mm -hmm. you look at a couple of articles talking about what they think is the reason why books are getting longer, the biggest reason that they cite is ebooks that when you go into a store when you go into the library a big intimidating factor is when you look at the book and it's just this chonker if it's two green angel oh, Tower, hold on hold on a second <laughs> look at this, this. thing <laughs> you look at this on the <laughs> shelf and you go oh I, I, I can't. I I'm look not at this, doing this. I look at this. I go, let's go 10 reps for three <laughs> sets and then call it a day. This is not a book. This is a dumbbell. Yeah. This, no, it's, it honestly is hefty. <laughs> it's thing, a hefty. Look book. at this thing. <laughs> that's, yeah. But you look at the shelf and that's intimidating. And as a publisher, you're looking at, hey, I want things to sell. That's a barrier to read. That's a barrier to buy is it being a very long book and intimidating mm -hmm. versus an ebook is just a number. You know, the difference between five and 700 pages on ebook 
It's the same ebook. It's the it, same size. Visually speaking, yeah. it's not going to intimidate people. The number on the screen is eh. Who cares? Mm -hmm. So that's a reason. Now, I don't think that's everything. I think a big part of it is just publishers are allowing it. They've been the biggest barriers to entry of the whole uh, literary all of li all the literary works is can i give an example of that? like go ahead so lord of the rings mm -hmm. the publisher did not allow lord of the rings to be one book tolkien wanted it as one book they said break this up that's not yeah. what people want and maybe part of that proved to the general audience is people can get involved in a long epic series and specifically fantasy. So this doesn't account for all genres, but fantasy has gotten much longer because of Tolkien's inspiring large epic worlds where you just don't have the time in a shorter book to give you a Westeros or a Middle Earth or a, a, a the Shattered Plains, R Roshar, or a, a, any big epic world you could think of. You need more page time to set yourself in a whole... And this is not Earth. We can't just say, here's yeah, some elements. You need elements. more time. You need more time. So that's one reason, at least with fantasy, of why it's gotten longer. So maybe maybe people... The audience and the, audience and the readers want more of that. And those books tend to be very successful where they get turned into TV shows and movies. And maybe what marketers or maybe what book publishers are thinking as well. So think of big IPs like Harry Potter, Wheel of Time even now. Lord of the Rings, all these things are, they get reader investment because they create a long, deep world with characters you really get to know. It feels so parasocial. It's like, I know who that person is. And honestly, I know characters in books more than I know you. That's fair. That's more of me just ignoring you, but other yeah, than that, yeah. I also choose not to tell you some things, you know? Do you know when my birthday is? January. January what? I don't want to dox you, okay? <laughs> Wait, is it 13th? It is. Ah! Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, good, good. Oh, that felt good. I inside. don't know yours. <laughs> Pick a month. <laughs> Just guess. Is... Come on, buddy. Is it December? Oh, my God. It's so far <laughs> off. That's, that's not even close. It was just... It's July? No. Oh. No. This is why I have Facebook and calendars. <laughs> I got you a very nice birthday Wait, do, gift. Does this help you? Huh. I'm a Taurus. No, that okay. helps me less. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. I'm doubling Wait, down. you know uh, what your I'm star sign is? I'm doubling down on December after that. Me? Yeah. Are you actually a Taurus? Well, I was born in April. I don't believe... That's what it, oh, wait, well, first let's clear up. You I'm, actually know the star signs? I know I'm a Taurus because that's what people tell me. I don't believe in the astrology thing, of course. You don't immediately when someone tells you, yep, yep. excise it from your mind because that's worthless knowledge. I don't have that ability. Um, <laughs> I don't have the ability your shirt says of just <laughs> what the people say is cringe. <laughs> how, how cool are these hoodies, by the way? <laughs> but I know. I, I do not have that ability. So what were we huh. talking about with birthdays and something? Oh, fantasy books, and then bring me back. The People's Opinion. No, uh, before that. Before that. Tolkien. And, okay, Tolkien. It's very, uh, bigger, deeper worlds. Characters. Parasocial characters. There Knowing we go. people, and then I knew characters more than I knew you, and that's birthday. <laughs> okay, so what maybe big IPs are doing and wanting longer stories is that gets more audience, in, audience investment, more money. Larger and obviously the authors that are writing this just want to write deep, awesome worlds, and yeah, I, they need the time to do overall. That. If we're looking at the game, it's always the authors writing more and the publishers and editors saying like, "Write less, please." It's never the writer makes something and the publisher goes, eh, "Write more, please." Like, can you make this book longer? Oh, a little bit longer, right? They don't want that. They never want that because. The book sale is going to cost the same, whether it's longer or shorter. They just care if it's good and it'll sell. Right. Modern technology, like you're saying, with ebooks. Mm -hmm. Not just that. Computers versus typewriters and handwriting. Now, if we're talking past 20 years, maybe more so mm -hmm. computers, a little bit of, of an influence on this, especially how it's been easier with laptops. Actually, but I, there's, yeah. What? In addition to that, dictaphone, like what? actually talking out what, your book. It? What did you say? Dictaphone. I've never heard that before. Have you not heard no. of a dictaphone? No, what's that? That's talking out the words and it types it for you. Oh, no. You oh, say? dictate the dictation. Okay, got yeah. it. Got it. Do you, have you ever heard of dictaphone? Nope. nope. 
But here's the thing. You've also gaslit me into believing phrases in the past, and I'm not about to walk on the street going, yeah, I was using my dick to phone the other day, and they go, what the, what'd you call me? <laughs> so I'm going to take your word for it now and then research after. Okay, good. <laughs> I may have gaslit myself. I don't know. <laughs> so what but is no, this? Yeah. But no, just that is faster mm-hmm. than writing. You can talk much faster than you can type. Well, yeah. okay, most people. There's some of you crazies out there. Is but it, yeah. for the most part, that's an even faster way. So you go from handwriting to typewriting to typewriting on a uh, computer to dictaphone where you can actually talk it out. I think that's what Churchill did to when he would have his thoughts. He would just talk out loud and have his secretary write it down. Oh, yeah. Some, which, what, some of his best sold books like, um, oh, what, is it Just Morality or it, oh, what is... Wait, what? Um, mere, mere Christianity. What? What? You're, one one of his published books. Well, is hold, based, you're talking about C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity. What? Huh? Yes, I, I said Churchill. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. I was thinking. <laughs> you're saying they're British, British. You said British guy. Let me think of another British guy that was alive then. <laughs> British. There's a C in the word. You so confidently said that too. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not just say everything? With confidence, whether I, you are or not. Thank God you don't have a dictaphone transcriber or whatever, because that would be like, <laughs> a, 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 that's not good. But no, C.S. Lewis, that, that book that he published, Mere Christianity, yeah. is so CS just Lewis, his... But just so we're clear, C.S. Lewis published this and then what? Yeah, yeah. it's just his from a radio show that it, Got it. talked it out Got and it. someone else typed it up. Wow. wow. No, was it? I'm so... Well, it, partly. Yeah, part of that. I know it's different. It's... Sure. I, I, okay, you guys comment. I, I, I get it. It's very different, but still... Comment down below who's been a dictaphone to you today. And we'll go. <laughs> but so with the easier methods to write, this is one example that I thought was super cool. Mm-hmm. So Neil Gaiman, mm-hmm. author of like American Gods, Neverwhere, Stardust, Coraline, uh, all, these, all these books that he writes, he always writes the first draft pen to paper, pencil to paper, just writes it by hand. And so his books typically aren't as long because that's excruciating. You can't write yeah. that much with your hand. It's a bit more. So... He, for example, American Gods is his, one of his longer books at 188,000 words, but he has Stardust at 63,000, Coraline at 30,000, Graveyard Book at 69,000. You have The Ocean at the End of the Lane at 53. But these are generally shorter books because he's writing with pen to paper. So mm-hmm. today's a bit of technology and also production costs being so much lower, just modern technology allowing books to be lo- longer is easier to produce and not as difficult on the production end. Yeah, it makes sense to me. But we've talked about now what? Like, are they actually getting longer? Yeah. And then the why. Well, there's. Do you have any more why? Do you think there's other reasons oh. behind this? Other reasons? Mm. Well, we've already talked about, I think this somewhat like a simple prose can be made longer. Mm-hmm. But, and then we talked about ease, ebooks. Mainly, I think publishers is the big deal. I got one to toss at you as well that we didn't touch Shoot on. It. Maybe having more luxurious time and more free time today. Hey, that's a certain. So that's certainly a good point. Even though that today th- there's more competition for your attention. So hey, films and this and that. Films haven't. Films. There's still very long films that are made today. And I think the reason media is able to be so long is, well, look at all these inventions that have happened in the past. Now, you now don't have to spend as much time cooking and cleaning and laundry. And, th- and obviously, I'm giving this over a 100-year span, 50-year span. Your travel but to work is typically shorter. <laughs> maybe you work from home. There, there's just more things that allow you to pick what you want to do with your free time. Now, again, TikTok does take a lot of that for some people. How are Please, you, How are you it. doing with YouTube shorts? Actually, this, this, is a, this is a story for me. I've made significant strides. So I, I've never downloaded TikTok to my phone because I knew it could have... It would have just ruined you. It would have controlled me. I yeah. don't have the good control, but I had YouTube and YouTube shorts. <laughs> yeah. And that was bad. Trying to get to sleep on time. It took up so much of my day. I actually eventually, so I did a couple things. One, I downloaded a blocker on my computer to remove it from my computer so I don't see it. Then on my phone, I downloaded gray, uh, gray J or gray. Gray, something. Gray Bird, uh, Lewis Rossman's app for YouTube. Okay. Basically, it's a YouTube app that it can get rid of ads, 
But what I did is I still pay for YouTube Premium and connect it to that account. So that way, YouTubers still see me. I I'm hoping YouTube is giving the money still okay. correctly got to it, the people. But that doesn't have YouTube Shorts on it. So that's another thing. Mm. And then I had to just to have a self-imposed rule of my bedroom is not allowed to have my phone in it. Uh -huh. So I have I charge my phone outside my bedroom. So when I go into my room, it is books or sleep. Set yourself in the invest environment. Yeah. And it's it's helped a lot. <laughs> it's helped a significant amount of I actually get a relatively good amount of sleep. You got eleven hours? That was that one night. That I Remember think that's that? mostly my caffeine crash. Oh, okay, got it, got it. So a lot of changes in your life recently. I know. Yeah, I'm I like the more you can change, the more chances you have for me to tolerate you. That's, yeah, it, it, there's a lot to tolerate. Yep, yep. But you wanted to. Oh, last thing, last mm -hmm. thing on the why. Modern prose. What do you think about modern prose affecting longer books at all? Do you think that it's more wordy today than it used to be? Do you think people are more efficient? A couple decades I, ago, I certainly think it's more wordy than it used to be. Uh, that now this is just an opinion and a gut reaction there are of course examples but like to the contrary mm -hmm. but i think vocabulary wise it's less it's less than what we would look at so i mean i think that's just a general trend if you look from shakespeare to now has has our vocabulary as has our grammar gotten more sophisticated since shakespeare or has everything gone like just a downward spiral Eh, I would lean toward downward trend. Nothing's gone picked up. But is that my interpretation or is that just I understand today's grammar and culture around our language and generations previous, I just don't get it as much because that's a different Yeah, it's, different it's tough to judge that. Mm -hmm. But I see what you mean. I, see what you mean. I, I mean, even the Great well, Gatsby. Like, it's not that that long ago. No, if you look... But, I think the the writing style of it is very sophisticated. The vocabulary and which used, makes it shorter, which does make it shorter. So and, I, I mean, it's tough to speculate because then you have your worn piece, then you have your mm -hmm. uh, gone with the winds, then you have your uh, all your Dostoevsky. <laughs> like, so it's it's tough to judge just based on picking a book out from a certain time. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean more so with maybe fantasy books because besides the Besides things getting longer because of more epic and grounded worlds, do you think simpler language is being used as a good writing style to, to get more people to be able to read it as well? Like just generally that trend, do you think simple prose is beneficial to the book? To the book's success, I should say. Certainly. It, okay. it's, I'm thinking of something like Stormlight Archive uses a pretty simple approach to prose. It's not... It, it, so. I love Stormlight Archive. Not, not a knock on what, it. What are you about to but say? But the prose is very different from something like The Name of the Wind or uh, something like A Fire Upon the Deep. There's other books that are really... I had to sit there and really try to read it, and it was a harder read. Stormlight is not that. But for such a long book, if that, re if that really long book was a tough read... God, that's a workout. You need a quick read. Like, you need uh, it needs words. to actually yeah. go, th like, yeah. it needs to be simpler because I could not sit through a complex prose version of Stormlight Archive. How long Couldn't is Name of the it. Wind? It's long. But that's also, it. this is part of what makes Patrick Rothfuss so, like, a literary genius. He actually is so good, is the prose is really sophisticated, complex, but understandable. Mm. It doesn't use a really out there vocabulary but it is well written and it's very concise i think so okay it does the best of both awesome wonderful writing terrible characters but <laughs> well i gotta read that so we can do a review here we got it yeah you gotta but straight up question to you then do you mm -hmm. prefer the shorter books or the longer books wait as a reader what mm. what tickles your fancy what teeters your totter more what teeters my totter well yeah. I, what totters my teeter is Can you just, generally... What cringes my democracy? <laughs> <laughs> what really scratches the itch for me is a shorter book. Typically, I find shorter books to be more concise. It's the constraints. It's kind of my feeling on art in general that art needs to be constrained within rules and boundaries 
because if you have boundaryless uh, art, it normally just develops into chaos, and chaos typically doesn't make good art. Clarify there a little bit, because fantasy can be considered boundaryless. So you just mean in the rules of the fantasy that you create. In the rules of literature. Like, basically, have a page limit. Like, okay. hey, could a fantasy author write a 2,000-page book? Yes, they could. Don't do that. Don't. Write it. Some are getting close. Cut it down. <laughs> like, Rhythm of War is like 1,300 pages, you know? I know. <laughs> Shorter. <laughs> you don't need it that long. Like, you need constraints of cut that, add this. Like, it, you need to trim it down because no story generally needs to be that long. And so I like those constraint books, especially the books that are like really short and they have to get a whole story and a whole character. You either care about the character, the plot, all this stuff in like 100 pages. Generally, I fall in love with that it's way more efficient less wasted time and it's hard mm -hmm. when you find a big book you can go that's fluff that's fluff that's fluff but a big book versus a short book if you're going into a longer one the it's more high risk high reward it's the way to put it where if you're reading a longer book you can get more of those emotional highs because you spending longer in a book wheel of time for example yeah. you probably got the highest of highs emotions at the end of wheel of time because you just spent that long with those characters whereas if in book two all your characters had the resolution. It's like, oh, that was great fun. Yeah. Whereas any short book you think of, as much as you love it, and it, maybe it focuses on the message, it sticks with you because Emperor Soul is a short book. Pure Nessie is a short one that sticks with us, where the message is just, wow, it makes me think because it told it so efficiently and I got the moral from it and I, it leads to a good discussion. So maybe those short books can do that better sometimes. But then your longer book, like your Wheel of Time epics and the Storm of Archives, and, yeah. Yeah. Red Rising, even as it becomes a longer and longer series, you fall more in love with the character. So those highs are, I know who this person is. I've been with Harry Potter for six books now. This matters a lot to me. And so you're definitely right. It, for if you want a character journey and you want the reader to just love and almost have a yeah a, a parasocial relationship with your character, you gotta have long. You gotta have a lot of pages. And then the flip side, the high risk part is Game of Thrones season eight. Yeah. The high risk part is Light, the end of Lightbringer series, which mm -hmm. I haven't read, but you told me it was a big disappointment. And now you look back to at me. that series, you love the first four books, but then you yeah. go, eh, because the fifth one didn't land for you. And for me, I was the biggest Game of Thrones addict, the, the show <laughs> itself. I was the biggest. I got so many people to watch that show. I, I loved it, and I was, the, I was the biggest fan, but season eight, yeah, destroys my whole. Uh, I can't look at it the same because of how it ended. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's the high risk part. You can invest all this time and then get ultra disappointed. Whereas if they disappointed me in season one, if someone thing disappoints you in book one, ah, you're not that invested. So who cares? I didn't emotionally involve myself here, so I don't feel cheated. Yeah, that's fair. But that's throw the question right back at you. Yeah, what would you prefer, short books or very long books? <sighs> I'm gonna give my real answer after my fake answer. Okay. My, my Your fake answer. My fake answer of I don't have a preference is the fake answer. Because I think I don't have a preference because I love, they're, they're short books. I could say I love that so much. Like your small guys, your disc worlds, are, they hit so hard. But then your longer books. Like I would even consider Sword of Kaigen a longer sized book. Sure. Not huge, but because I'm a character first person, I think I would say longer books. That's that, what I was going to, that's, gonna, that's uh, I was also going to say for you. Yes. Is, that, that's my more real answer. I, I can enjoy both, but if I had to pick, I want my long one so that I can understand a character and get a message out of that. But of course, that's where you have your more... I think some of the books that are the lowest rated for me are, are longer books that I disliked. Mm, Thousand so Deaths of Arthur of Ben. Think of that. Woo. If Thousand Deaths of Arthur Ben was that's shorter... That's a thick book, It's too. a thick book. If that, if that book was shorter, I would have been kinder. Because you, did, you feel as a reader, if you wasted your time... Like, it didn't waste too much of my time. It was only 100 pages, right? You're a little bit more lenient. And you go, it didn't hit for me, but I was only there for, you know, a couple hours. So who cares? So just like how we do an hour-long podcast, the longer we go, the more disappointed people can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people, can't dis can't, people can't be disappointed with one-minute shorts. It's like, no. Eh, who cares? Maybe that's why people scroll for three hours, is it doesn't feel disappointing in each moment. Because each moment, you're like, ah, I didn't waste time because 
that was nothing, that was nothing, that was nothing. But then after the three hours and you mm-hmm. walk away and you go, why did I do that? Well, now I regret it. Novelty is one of the biggest manipulators in human psyche. Like almost all humans want novelty. Novelty is something that every everybody strives for and it's something that can be manipulated. So with TikTok, it's all about the novelty. And they even have their own algorithms of they don't show you the best. They don't show because they know what you like. They don't show you what you like because if you just got what you wanted, then you would eventually click off. You're fine. Mm. But they do the waves of they show you a bit what you want. Yep. Then they show you something you don't like. They deliberately show you a couple things that you don't like and you're hoping for the next hit. And then you get what you want. And then it stuff dips back. Up. And it's yeah, it's like a casino. It's, that was a great. That was a great graph rich yep great great (laughs) so what do you think i mean you prefer short books i mean not like you don't read your long books but what are the advantages other than just that efficiency that a short book has that makes you like it more well you were touching on it of it's harder to disappoint you as much because i'm going to give a probably a little bit more lenience like i'm not going to emotionally hate the book if it wasn't as good i don't feel like i wasted my time is it fair to say, too, when you think back to that book? Mm-hmm. And personal, I know you love that short, the, the book. I, th- I really like it, too. Yeah. But you think back to that, and it's hard to, it's easier to remember all of the book. Certainly. Whereas a short yeah. book, you can remember all the moments. Whereas if you ask me in Stormlight, my favorite series, what happens in Words of Radiance, I got two things. <laughs> <laughs> obviously there's more than that there's yeah I get, okay i could probably name like five to ten scenes boom but the in between i forget oh yeah i, hey, I forget my favorite series ever the wheel of time yeah i'll be honest a lot of it i don't remember i remember all the good stuff but which makes it better because all the bad stuff didn't happen no yeah exactly that's the thing there isn't even bad stuff in the wheel of time that in my mind mm-hmm. there's like just okay things or like eh Less interesting. Move along. Ah, oh, that was awesome. And that's the stuff I remember. Yeah. But yeah, exactly right. I, I probably know for Wheel of Time, I can think, I can remember three books worth of things <laughs> total. Of the 14. Of the 14. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of just like, okay, this is just like the strategy of Wheel of Time. It mm-hmm. all takes place in real time. There's no jump cuts. A lot of fantasy books happening. will like, oh, a year forward or when they're traveling, they will like jump forward a couple months. None of that. They do we have all, the ways. They do, but they it's travel the a distance. Time, yeah. Time-wise, everything happens mm. at the exact same rate that you're reading it. Mm. There's no big jumps. So that's good for character study. Like you're with your character, so you feel more intimately attached to them because you're with them through everything. But... Now, would you it say? It takes up a lot of time. Would you say though, for your wheel of times, where you spend, where you forget a lot of it, mm-hmm. does it make it better on reread compared to a short book? Because a short book, if if you were to go reread Emperor Soul, I'm sure you'd still really like it. But maybe it's harder to get something out of a short book after a second read than it is out of a long one because you catch details on the longer one because you forgot so much. Definitely true. So you're sticking with your short book answer here. Yeah, I, hey, I'm. I love sci-fi most of the time. Sci-fi is my thing. And I love a good short sci-fi book that I remember at all. It's concise. The message is great. It's. Can I feed you one more reason I think you like it more? Hmm. At the end of all of your big series, typically all the questions are answered. At the end of your shorter books, typically there's still questions to be had. And you think back because it, it completes the story, but there's an incomplete portion about that. You like the little bit of confusion and that you, you're, true. you're still thinking about the world because it's like, oh, what's happening now? I still sometimes like ponder back on the end of uh, Neuromancer. But don't spoil, but yes. I, but you know what I mean? I, like, I did it, read it, yeah. I, relative, I know the end, yeah. Relatively short book, but the ending was so interesting to me. And yeah, kind of a, there's left questions unanswered. I did not think once because I hated the book, but, that's, <laughs> but yeah, th- I get what you mean where it leaves you on a, where's this, how does this change the world? And mm-hmm. yeah. So short books for you, long books for me, but they both have their pros and cons. Yeah. I, so. I'm, I far more am in the middle on it. I maybe lean on the short book side. Okay. Well, now do you want to play a little game, Rich? Yeah, let's play a little game here. A little guessing game mm-hmm. of word counts from books. And hey, I'll let you bat first if you want. It's up to you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you want me to throw this at you? Throw it at me. <clears throat> the book 
1984. What is the word count for 1984? A classic. Are you going to... Uh, any uh, multiple choice answer or I just get to You want to, me to give you multiple it. choice? Yeah. Okay. Give me multiple choice. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. 73,000. 89,000. 103,000. 140,000. I'm going with 103,000. 89,000. Damn it. You lose. <laughs> I did lose. I'm going to take a drink of uh. my water. <laughs> well, now you got to toss one at me. I'm, I'm getting this. Okay. Here we go. I'm thinking... Okay. Isaac Asimov's Foundation. Oh, God. The first book. Oh, God. You know what? I recently heard Sanderson talk about Foundation. Okay. And what he said about it, I didn't know this. Foundation was written by Isaac Asimov in a... It was written in, not comics, but the weekly paper, mm -hmm. where it, he would continue the story in each weekly episode, yep. episode. So then he put that into a book, and so it reads really uniquely. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think, how many papers did he write to get... The, give me a multiple choice. I'll give you multiple choice. Okay. 40,000. Wow. 50,000. Wow. 70,000? Oh. Or 100,000? I'm going 70. Is it shorter? Damn that short. I'm going 70. Lock in. Final answer. You got it. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. 70,000 words, but the entire series, foundation series, is over 800,000 words. Got it. There's a lot to it. Okay. There's a lot. Now, he, here's a comparison I wanted to give you. And... I'm not going to give multiple choice. I just generally, I genuinely want to see what you think the word count is for these. Mm -hmm. And this will lead to a little bit of commentary on my part and your part. But how long is the Rhythm of War compared to the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Rhythm of War, how many words would you say Rhythm of War is? The longest book in Sanderson's Stormlight Archive and Lord of the Rings trilogy. We're talking Fellowship, we're talking Two Towers, and we're talking Return of the King. The... A rhythm of War is somewhere around 430,000 words. 455. You basically Dang. got it. 455,000 words. I think the Lord of the Rings is only like, I think like 550,000 words. That's yes. Pretty much. I did that. get it right. Yes, 550 and one and change. So, oh, okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, I got it right. The reason that's we're talking about books getting longer. Lord of the Rings, <laughs> if you think about it, how much... Uh, okay, to be fair, Lord of the Rings did have the books after it, the appendices, and you have um, Silmarillion, Silmarillion and yeah. hi History of Middle-Earth. But in just that trilogy, the amount of lore and the effect it's had on pop culture and all books ever, and it's that size. I always thought it's before... <laughs> I, I always thought before reading Lord of the Rings, like, oh, look at that. I know you, you thought the same, that look at this oh, yeah. grand, massive epic that I could never read because it's so long. Mm-hmm. But then it doesn't seem like that in hindsight. No, I mean, it, it's supposed to be, and it reads well as three books too. Yeah. But yeah, comparatively, like if you think of it as a trilogy of books, man, it's efficient. It's an efficient storytelling with all this lore. Story, like, so it's the best of both one, worlds for you. So it's a shorter epic. Yeah, it, that's why it's the goat. The goat! That's yeah. a, okay, I, I can't. I know there's a lot of, for some reason, a weird trend on book talk these days of people saying that Lord of the Rings is overrated and overhyped. And that, like, if it was released today, it wouldn't have the same reaction. I read it after a, after watching the movies, after reading some other epic fantasy series. And I don't think I've had the... I don't think I've had a better reading experience than Lord of the Rings. Like, while I'm reading it, I had some of the most fun ever because it sparked so much curiosity where I was constantly on Reddit forums. I was looking up questions. I was investigating maps. It, I felt like a kid. Why do people, why do you think, it. why do you think people are saying it's, wouldn't do well today? Well, and to be fair, maybe it wouldn't, but it definitely is an action heavy. I, I've tried telling this to people, like, if, I don't recommend Lord of the Rings to everyone. It is not everyone's book because the the quick example to show them is if you start reading Lord of the Rings and you start skipping the poems and you like get to the tavern scene and you just kind of gloss over the poem that's being read and the song, the books ain't for you. 
stop reading it. If you're skipping that, read something else. And like I, I know our roommate Justin, like I asked skips, him, he skips over the interludes. He skipped over. White. No, he also yeah. skipped the songs. Like he tried I, reading. No, he never read Lord I'm of the Rings. Yeah. Pretty sure he did. I must yeah. be thinking of another Somebody friend. Somebody else that did because it. He skipped over the interludes. You're talking about, yeah, yeah which is Stormlight. Through. But no, I loved it. And mm-hmm. so, if that is your thing, it's going to be the best reading experience ever, and it's going to just spark this curiosity and wonder inside you. All right. If that's not what you're looking for and you want this action heavy epic, you're not gonna find it. Yeah. So Lord of the Rings has a charm to it and it makes you feel cozy. And I just want to give everybody a sneak peek, okay? Mm-hmm. I I can't wait for this. This is I'm sorry, Rich. Like I don't mean this as a dig to you at okay. all. I don't. I'm gonna take it once. Okay. Was one. okay. But I'm we're I'm about to have the best episode of our podcast ever. Because oh. I got my grandma to read Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. And if you don't mind, Rich, I want to have her on the pod. And oh, yeah. we're going to go into Lord of the Rings. And <laughs> I got I got her The Hobbit for Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. And she loved it. She talks about Balbo Baggins. And then she, it's a, I, I, I love my That'd grandma. I love Lord of the Rings. And it's going to be an amazing time. But she's, she's on no two offense. towers. Well, she's on two towers right now. And what she did when getting it, this is, this is what's incredible. She goes to the store to pick it up and she asks the clerk, she leans over and goes, so what, do they make it to Mordor? And because my grandma <laughs> generally doesn't know anything about Lord of the Rings. She oh, is reading wow. it without knowing the movies, without knowing the <laughs> pop culture, without knowing what the ring was. She, she reads it and goes, this Tom Bombadil is such a joy. And I'm like, Grandma, yeah, Grandma. <laughs> and so I am just full of glee. I can't wait. She's on two towers. She's going to read Return of the King. And then Grandma's coming on to the ramble. You're going to ha- you're gonna bring her over to the house, into the studio, or well, digital? Well, probably digital because she it's a far it's a far hike. I guess. It's, well, it's a six-hour drive. and I, oh, You can't get your grandma on a drive-by? I kind of want some of her cooking. <laughs> You di- you can't appreciate her cooking like I can. Listen, my grandma accommodates <laughs> to my strange diet. <laughs> Love you, grandma. And do you want to close out there with a message to my grandma? He doesn't appreciate your cooking. I will. Come over, please. I- I'll be the grandson that your your current one fails to be. See y'all next week. Bye, y'all.